Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So this year in 2023, there have been a lot of rumors swirling around a potential bonus check of up to $1,200 sent out to all social security beneficiaries as well as many Americans as well. So I'm going to be personally addressing those rumors in this video and what I think is more than likely going to end up happening. But before we go ahead and dive into the main content of today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm and also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Okay, so to start things out here, we're gonna be talking about two different topics. We're gonna be talking about both inflation and then a possible recession. So we're gonna be going over those. So first off, inflation, as far as inflation goes, that has been coming down recently. It's not in the negative range. Inflation prices are still going up, but they are going up at a slower pace than where they were last year. So like back in 2022, inflation was up as high as 9% at one point in time. It has come down since then, not meaning that prices are coming down, prices are still going up, but they are going up at a slower pace than what they were last year. So of course, this is very good news. So according to CNBC, of course, back in July for the CPI report that was released just a few days ago in, in August, uh, it showed it rose at just 3.2% year over year. And as far as the monthly inflation, it rose up just 0.2% on the month, which on an annualized, annualized pace, that is just 2.4%. So it's getting much closer down to the 2% year over year that the Federal Reserve is, is pretty much looking for it as an acceptable rate of inflation, even though really, in my opinion, at least there should not be any type of acceptable range of inflation. Because if we have 2% inflation every single year, well, you know, over 10 years, that's 20% inflation, which means if you had $100 sitting in a bank account and inflation went up by, you know, 20% over uh, 10 years, well, your $100 is now going to be substantially worth less uh, after that time period, just sitting in the bank, you know, collecting dust, not earning any type of interest or anything like that. Now, as far as the possible recession goes, we've been talking about a, a lot of economists have been talking about a recession that's finally going to be hitting in 2023. Well, fortunately, we've actually avoided that. We've seen, you know, job gains still. The economy isn't seemingly being hurt that much, even though, you know, inflation is coming down. You would think there'd be a lot of job losses by now. Well, uh, fortunately, it looks like we may be having a soft landing. Now, a lot of people actually forget that back in 2022, by the standard definition of what a recession actually is, which is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth, which is absolutely what we had, we already had a recession last year. And then we had the White House and members of the media changing the definition of what a recession actually is. So they were saying, well, this isn't actually a recession, even though technically it actually was if you look at the definition and what we've actually always used as far as recessions go. But a lot of economists are now saying that in 2023 and perhaps even earlier on in 2024, we might actually just avoid this whole recession thing altogether. So according to Reuters, JP Morgan raises US economic growth estimate no longer expects 2023 recession. So JP Morgan's chief economist said on Friday, the bank is no longer forecasting a US recession this year and has raised its economic growth estimate as the economy expands at a quote, healthy pace. The firm increased its current quarter real annualized GDP growth estimated to 2.5% from 0.5%. Michael Feroli wrote in a research note on Friday, quote, given this growth, we doubt the economy will quickly lose enough momentum to slip into a mild contraction as early as next quarter, as we had previously projected, the economist wrote. And while recession risks are still elevated for next year, Farrelly said he expects modest subpar growth. Earlier this week, strategists at Bank of America said they no longer forecast a 2024 recession for the U.S. and increased their 2023 economic growth outlook for the country. J.P. Morgan's Farrelly pointed to items such as the relatively quick resolution of the debt ceiling and regulators' implicit guarantee of bank depositors during the regional banking crisis earlier on this year. And then, of course, we have an article from the New York Times. This is headline saying, could the recession in the distance be just a mirage? So clearly, clearly we now have a lot of economists coming out saying we might just avoid this whole recession thing after all. And this is extremely important because, again, we have two different items. We have inflation. 
then we also have a recession. Now, typically, whenever inflation has been very high and we brought it down lower by raising rates uh, from the Federal Reserve, typically that actually gets us into a recession because we have a lot of job losses and then we experience negative GDP growth for two consecutive or more quarters. Now, it seems like we might actually avoid a recession even though we had one back in 2022. We might actually avoid one in 2023, in 2024, at least according to Bank of America and JP Morgan. So we'll just have to wait and see. But what this has to do with as far as bonus checks or stimulus checks or whatever you wanna call them go. Well, for them to be sent out, for us to have another round of early payments, which a lot of people absolutely need, especially with the rising cost, people that say fixed income like Social Security could absolutely use one of these bonus checks. Well, you know, even though we have inflation going down, which is going to be super important for these to be sent out because it's going to be very difficult for lawmakers to agree to another round of stimulus checks being sent out if we have inflation still very high. Since it's, coming, since it's coming down, it's going to increase the chances for these bonus stimulus checks to be sent out. But unfortunately, well, it could be fortunately, but unfortunately, uh, you know, unless we go into a recession, it's, it's very unlikely they're going to send anything out. Typically, if you do happen to run into a recession, stimulus checks are a very popular tool to use when we run into a recession to get the economy jump-started again. So unless we run into some sort of recession that's say probably earlier on next year in 2024, it's pretty unlikely they're going to send another round of relief payments out if we don't go into a recession. But we have one of the two things that are needed for more relief payments to be sent out, that is inflation coming down. Now it's just going into a recession, which is, is bad for the economy, but then of course it's, it means there's a higher chance for more stimulus checks to be sent out. So regardless though, I mean, relief payments would be very necessary for a lot of Americans. I mean, even the 8.7% COLA that was sent out in 2023, many people receiving social security benefits would say the 8.7% increase wasn't enough, that they would, they would absolutely need more money. And sending out maybe a one-time payment of that, say like $1,200 would certainly help out a lot of Americans in this time where prices are still rising. Inflation isn't rising as fast as it was back in 2022, but it absolutely still is going up. If you look at the prices of the gas pump, nearing $4 and even over $4 in some states. So a lot of people could really use them. And other than that, we can really just hope that Social Security can have some type of reform as well. So, you know, this year we've had bills by Bernie Sanders, which would increase benefits for all Americans by $200 per month for receiving social security. And then those receiving the special minimum benefit, they could see an increase as much as $485. And then we have the bill by John Larson, the social security 2100 act that would increase the special minimum benefit also by $485 per month. And then for everyone else, they would see a 2% boost in their benefits. And then of course we have some other plans out there like the bipartisan one by uh, Bill Cassidy and Angus King. There wouldn't be any guarantee increase in that bill right now. It's they're still kind of you know talking about it. It's not even in the form of a bill right now, but you know that's something that could potentially solve the solvency issue. Which again, ten years from now, they are saying that if nothing is done to save the Social Security trust fund, there would be an automatic cut of anywhere between twenty to twenty-five percent. Which people receiving benefits right now, whatever they're receiving, certainly isn't enough. So if we're going to cut benefits even more by 20 to 25%, that's going to make you know social security just pretty much unlivable. And many people are gonna to have to go out and get some source of income, some source of job, because you know 25% reduction in what they're receiving then, it's gonna be very, very difficult to get by, especially with the rising costs. But that's all I have for today's video. I certainly hope that you enjoyed. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate if you could give this video a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already and I will see you in the next video.